The Ferry Aviation Company Limited was a British aircraft manufacturer of the first half of the 20th century based in Hayes in Middlesex and Heaton Chapel and RAF Ringway in Lancashire. Notable for the design of a number of important military aircraft, including the Ferry Three family, the Swordfish, Firefly, and Gannet, it had a strong presence in the supply of naval aircraft, and also built bombers for the RAF. After World War II the company diversified into mechanical engineering and boat building. The aircraft manufacturing arm was taken over by Westland Aircraft in 1960. Following a series of mergers and takeovers, the principal successor businesses to the company now trade as FBM Babcock Marine Limited, Spectrus PLC, and WFEL, formerly Williams Ferry Engineering Limited, the latter manufacturing portable bridges. Topic: History. Founded in 1915 by Charles Richard Ferry, later Sir Richard Ferry and Belgian engineer Ernest Oscar Tips on their departure from Short Brothers, the company first built under license or as subcontractor aircraft designed by other manufacturers. The first aircraft designed and built by the Ferry Aviation specifically for use on an aircraft carrier was the Ferry Campagna a patrol seaplane that first flew in February 1917. In the third report of the Royal Commission on Awards to Inventors, reported in Flight Magazine of 15 January 1925, aviation figures prominently. C.R. Ferry and the Ferry Aviation Co. Ltd. was awarded £4,000 for work on the Hamble Baby seaplane. Ferry subsequently designed many aircraft types and, after World War II, missiles. The propeller division Ferry Reed Airscrews was located at the Hayes factory, and used designs based on the patents of Sylvanus Albert Reed. C.R. Ferry first encountered Reed's products in the mid-1920s when investigating the possibilities of the Curtiss D-12 engine. The Curtiss company also manufactured propellers designed by Reed. Another example of utilizing the talents of independent designers was the use of flaps, designed by Robert Talbot Youngman, Ferry Youngman flaps which gave many of the Ferry aircraft and those of other manufacturers improved maneuverability. Aircraft production was primarily at the factory in North Hyde Road, Hayes, Middlesex, with flight testing carried out at Northolt Aerodrome 1917 to 1929, Great West Aerodrome 1930 to 1944, Heston Airport 1944 to 1947, and finally at White Waltham 1947 to 1964. Losing the Great West Aerodrome in 1944 by requisition by the Air Ministry to build London Heathrow Airport, with no compensation until 1964, caused a severe financial shock which may have hastened the company's end. One notable Hayes-built aircraft type during the late 1930s and World War II was the Swordfish. In 1957, the prototype Ferry Rotodyne vertical takeoff airliner was built at Hayes. After the merger with Westland Helicopters, helicopters such as the Westland Wasp and Westland Scout were built at Hayes in the 1960s. Receipt of large UK military contracts in the mid-1930s necessitated acquisition of a large factory in Heaton Chapel Stockport in 1935 that had been used as the National Aircraft Factory No. 2 during World War I flight test facilities were built at Manchester's Ringway Airport, the first phase opening in June 1937. A few Hendon monoplane bombers built at Stockport were flown from Manchester's Barton Aerodrome in 1936. Quantity production of battle light bombers at Stockport, Ringway commenced in mid-1937. Large numbers of Fulmar fighters and Barracuda dive bombers followed during World War II. Ferries also built 498 Bristol Bowfighter aircraft and over 660 Handley Page Halifax bombers in their northern facilities. Post-war, Firefly and Gannett naval aircraft were supplemented by subcontracts from de Havilland for Vampire and Venom jet fighters. Aircraft production and modification at Stockport and Ringway ceased in 1960. On 13 March 1959 Flight reported that Ferry Aviation Limited was to be reorganized following a proposal to concentrate aircraft and allied manufacturing activities in the United Kingdom into a new wholly owned subsidiary called the Ferry Aviation Co. Ltd. The board felt that the change, taking effect on 1 April 1959, would enable the Rotodyne and other aircraft work to be handled by a concern concentrating on aviation. It is proposed to change the company's name to the Ferry Co. Ltd., and to concentrate general engineering activities in the Stockport Aviation Co. Ltd., whose name would become Ferry Engineering Ltd. Under these changes, the Ferry Co. would become a holding company, with control of policy and finance throughout the group. The government in the late 1950s was determined to rationalise the UK's aero industry. The Ministry of Defence saw the future of helicopters as being best met by a single manufacturer. The merger of Ferries Aviation interests with Westland Aircraft took place in early 1960 shortly after Westland had acquired the Saunders Row Group and the helicopter division of the Bristol Aeroplane Company. 
Westland Aircraft and the Ferry Company announced that they had reached agreement for the sale by Ferry to Westland of the issued share capital of Ferry Aviation, which operated all Ferry's UK aviation interests. Westland acquired all Ferry's aircraft manufacturing business including the Gannett AEW.3 and Ferry's 10% investment in the aircraft manufacturing company Airco. Ferry's workforce employed on manufacture of the outer wings of the Airco DH-121, later to be the HS-121 Trident, was transferred to Westland. Ferry received 2 million Westland shares of 5 shillings each and a cash payment of approximately £1.4 million. The sale did not include Ferry Air Surveys or the works at Heston which was home to the Weapon Division, which had a contract for research into advanced anti-tank missile systems. Ferry's remaining net worth was approximately £9.5 million. Topic the collapse of the Ferry Group In 1977 the Ferry Group went into receivership and was effectively nationalised by the government. Ferry went into liquidation when it introduced a Britain Norman Islander production line into its subsidiary company, Avions Ferry and overproduced the plane and subsequently faced redundancy payments of about £16 million in Belgium. The companies involved were as follows, Ferry Hydraulics Limited, Heston, Hydraulic Power Controls and Filters for Aircraft, sold in 1999 to a management buyout, name changed to Claverham Limited, bought in 2001 by Hamilton Sunstron. Ferry Engineering Limited, Stockport, General and Nuclear Engineering, Ferry Nuclear Limited, Heston, Nuclear Components and Light Engineering, see also Dungeness Nuclear Power Station Ferry Industrial Products Limited, Heston, Management Company, Ferry Filtration Limited, Heston, Industrial Filters, Ferry Winches Limited, Tavistock, Vehicle Overdrives, Winches and Hubs, Jergeson Tress Gauge and Valve Co. Limited, Newcastle, Liquid Level Indicators, The Tress Engineering Co. Limited, Newcastle, Petrochemical Valves, Ferry Marine Holdings Limited, Hamble, Management Company, Ferry Marine Marine, East Cows Limited, East Cows, Ship and Boat Building, Ferry Exhibitions Limited, Hamble, Exhibition Stand Contractors, Ferry Marine Limited, Hamble, Boat Building and Repair, Ferry Yacht Harbors Limited, Hamble, Boat Handling, Berthing and Storage, Ferry Surveys Limited, Maidenhead, Aerial and Geophysical Survey and Mapping, Ferry Surveys Scotland Limited, Livingston, Aerial and Geophysical Survey and Mapping, Ferry Developments Limited, Heston, Management Company, the Ferry Britain Norman Aircraft Company was taken over by Pilatus, then a subsidiary of the Earlycon Group in Switzerland. The rescue action was taken by the government under Section 8 of the Industry Act 1972 acquiring from the official receiver of the Ferry Company Limited the entire share capital for £201,163,000. The companies were managed by the National Enterprise Board In 1980 the Ferry Group was purchased by Dalton & Company Limited part of S. Pearson & Son from the NEB. At time, Pearson's interests in manufacturing were concentrated in the Dalton Fine China business. The engineering interests were strengthened in 1980 by the acquisition of the high technology businesses of Ferry, and their merging with Pearson's other engineering interests in 1982. However, these businesses were disposed of in 1986 as part of Pearson wishing to concentrate on core activities. Acquired by Williams Holdings, they became Williams Ferry Engineering Limited. Other parts of the combined Ferry Dalton Group saw a management buyout from Pearson, listing on the London Stock Exchange in 1988. During the 1990s this company concentrated on expanding its electronics business, acquiring a number of companies and disposing of the electrical insulator and hydraulic actuator businesses. In 1997, the company acquired Burnfield, of which Malvin Instruments was the most significant company. Servomex PLC was acquired in 1999. In July 2000, the acquisition of the four instrumentation and controls businesses of Spectrus AG of Germany for £171 million was the largest ever made by the company and marked an important strategic addition to the company's instrumentation and controls business. The reshaping of the group was marked with the change of name from Ferry Group to Spectrus PLC in May 2001. Topic: Subsidiary companies. Topic. Avions Ferry On 27 August 1931, Avions Ferry SA was founded by ferry engineer Ernest Oscar Tips. Ferry aircraft had impressed the Belgian authorities and a subsidiary, Avions Ferry was established to produce ferry aircraft in Belgium. The company staff left Belgium ahead of the German invasion of the Low Countries and returned after the war to build aircraft under license for the Belgian Air Force. With Ferry's financial troubles in the later 1970s, the Belgian government bought Avions Ferry to preserve its involvement in the Belgian F-16 project. See also Tipsy Nipper. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ferry Aviation of Canada. 
Formed in 1948 the Ferry Aviation Company of Canada Limited and grew from a six-man operation to a major enterprise employing around a thousand people. In March 1949, the company undertook repair and overhaul work for the Royal Canadian Navy on the Supermarine Seafire and the Ferry Firefly and later the Hawker Sea Fury and also undertook modification work on the Grumman Avenger. The Avro Lancaster conversion program created the need for plant expansion. The Lancaster was followed in service by the Lockheed Neptune and again the company undertook a share of the repair overhaul and service of these aircraft. The company was engaged in the modification and overhaul of the McDonnell Banshee. Ferry of Canada also developed a component and instrument design and manufacturing organization. The company began manufacture of hydro booster units which control flight surfaces hydraulically rather than manually. Other flight controls were designed and manufactured for the Avro CF-100. The Canadair Argus used ferry designed hydraulic actuators. The company also produced the Bear Trap helicopter, ship handling system for the Royal Canadian Navy. In the early 1960s, the company undertook the conversion of the Martin Mars flying boats to water bearing firefighters. Drawing on the parent company's expertise in the design of hydraulic equipment led to local manufacturer of the ferry microfilter, which had applications in industries beyond aviation. Yet another ferry designed and manufactured component was the safety ometer. This instrument had many applications in missiles, mining, quarrying and similar fields. The company was appointed agent for RFD inflatable marine survival equipment. This agency included sales, service inspection and repair of inflatable life rafts. The West Coast branch of the Ferry Aviation Company of Canada Limited was formed in 1955 at Sydney, Vancouver Island. The plant was located at Patricia Bay Airport. This facility handled mainly repair, overhaul and modification of military and civil aircraft including the conversion of ex-military Avenger aircraft to commercial cropdusting roles. Additionally, the company diversified into designing and manufacturing items of hospital equipment. Following the failure of the UK parent, Ferry Canada was acquired by Imp Group International. Topic: <laughs> Ferry Aviation Company of Australasia Pty Limited. The Australian branch of Ferry Aviation was formed in 1948 as Ferry Clyde Aviation Co. Pty. Ltd., a joint venture with Clyde Engineering and incorporated the aircraft division of CEC. The name was changed in November 1951. Based in Bankstown, Sydney, the factory overhauled aircraft for the Royal Australian Air Force and Royal Australian Navy, converted RAN Fireflyers, Fives to train a Mark V standard. The Special Projects Division built the Jindavik, Meteor, and Canberra drones at Woomera Missile Test Range. Ferry Australasia was the first company to be established at the Weapons Research Establishment WRE. This was in 1949 when the firm was involved in supporting research trials of the scale model of the Ferry vertical takeoff aircraft. Shortly afterwards the company expanded to manufacture the RTV, L research rockets that were fired in Australia. From this developed a design and production factory that specialized in the manufacture of airborne and ground equipment for target aircraft and missile fields including the Tonic Toad target, which can be carried and streamed by a Jindavik 3A. In 1957 a miniature camera by the name of WRECISS Weapons Research Establishment Camera Interception Single Shot was designed and developed by the WRE at Woomera and manufactured by the Ferry Aviation Co. of Australasia Pty Ltd. at Salisbury, South Australia. In most surface-to-air missile installations the cameras have been mounted in the nose telemetry bay. Although the firing lever must be replaced after each mission, it is estimated that some 30% of the WRECISS can be reused without repairs and a substantial further proportion can be repaired relatively cheaply. Its film was Ilford Photo State Route 101 in the form of 0.93 inches discs punched from 35mm strip, weight 801, diameter 1.5 inches, length 1.25 inches, field of view 186 dag, exposure time 0.3 millisecond, effective relative aperture, approximately f.8. 192 cameras were made in the initial production run. In 1988 this company was merged into Our Defence Industries of Australia. Topic Aerial Survey Ferry Air Surveys, Ltd., was initially headquartered at 24 Bruton Street, London W.1, and later at Reform Road, Maidenhead, with companies across the world. The aircraft Douglas Dakotas and technical officers were based at White Waltham, Barks, along with a special research laboratory. Here the company undertook the design and development of anti-vibration isolators which were incorporated into camera mountings. Both mapping and geophysical work was undertaken. The UK-based aircraft were sent out to work all over the world. The company undertook aerial surveys for local authorities within the UK and for many overseas governments. Maps were also published under the Fairy Falcon imprint. 
Over the years the company's names were changed to reflect ferry ownership and operated into the late 1970s, later becoming Clyde Surveying Services Limited. Ferry Surveys was absorbed into what eventually became Blom Aerofilms. Subsidiary companies were as follows, Ferry Surveys Scotland, Livingston, Aerial and Geophysical Survey and Mapping. Aero Surveys, Vancouver International Airport, Canada. This company was equipped to handle processing and mapping. Aircraft include two Ansons and one P-38. Operated in partnership with Fairchild Aerial Surveys, Inc. Air Survey Company of India, Dum Dum Airport, Calcutta. This branch was fully equipped for processing and mapping. Aircraft include a DC-3 and 3 DH Rapides known in 1946 as the Indian Air Survey and Transport Limited. Air Survey Company of Pakistan, Dunolly Road, Karachi, 2. This was an office only and no aircraft or ground equipment were permanently based there. Air Survey Company of Rhodesia, Salisbury, Southern Rhodesia. Fully equipped for processing and mapping. An Anson or a Dove from the UK fleet was available for operations. Other companies were located in Nigeria, Zambia and the Republic of Ireland. Topic: Engineering. Topic: Heaton Chapel. The ferry factory at Heaton Chapel, Stockport, can trace its roots back to when Crossley Bros. Limited, having had by the end of 1916 supplied large numbers of tenders and aero engines to the Royal Flying Corps, acquired premises at High Lane, Heaton Chapel, to expand production. In 1917, following the government's decision to build three national aircraft factories was taken, Crossley Motors Limited was formed to manage National Aircraft Factory No. 2 as it was known. The factory continued to produce aircraft until November 1918. After the First World War the site switched to vehicle production. The factory was taken over by Willys Knight and Overland Motors for the manufacture of cars and commercial vehicles and retained by them until 30 November 1934 when it was acquired by Ferry. In 1935 the Ferry Company received a substantial order for Hendon Night Bombers and established production lines at the Heaton Chapel factory. The production facilities at Heaton Chapel were incorporated as the Stockport Aviation Company Limited on of February 1936 and the company took a site at Ringway now Manchester Airport, where test flights were carried out. After the end of aircraft production the Heaton Chapel works became Ferry Engineering Limited and began production of medium and heavy engineering including portable bridges for military and emergency services use, notably the medium Goethe Bridge. Its bridges are in service with the British Army, US Army and many other NATO forces. Ferry Engineering Limited also made nuclear reactor cores and fueling machines for Dungeon SB and Trausvanith. The company became Williams Ferry Engineering in 1986, and was then taken over by KID part of the American giant United Technologies Corporation, in 2000, and became now known as WFEL Limited. In 2006 the Manchester Evening News reported that private equity investors Dunedin Capital Partners backed a management buyout of WFEL from UTC which employs 160 people at its factory on Crossley Road, Heaton Chapel. Land Rover hubs and overdrives In the post-war period, from the late 1950s onwards, Ferry acquired Mayflower automotive products, including their factory in Tavistock, Devon, and with it the designs of its products, including winch and free-wheeling front hubs for Land Rover vehicles. By the 1970s Ferry was manufacturing a wide range of winches, covering mechanical, hydraulic and electric drive and capstan, drum configurations. Ferry winches formed the bulk of the manufacturer-approved winch options for Land Rover throughout the 1970s and early 1980s. In 1975 Ferry designed and manufactured a mechanical overdrive unit for Land Rovers. Vehicles fitted with the unit carried a badge on the rear saying, Overdrive by Ferry, with the Ferry logo see above. This branch of products effectively ceased in the early 1980s when new product development at Land Rover and a trend for manufacturers to build accessories in-house forced Ferry to drop out of the sector. The American company Superwinch bought the Tavistock Works and continued making Ferry-designed winches for a few years. The site is now Superwinch's European base and manufacturing facility. Ferry-designed hydraulic winches are still in production, but the large majority of manufacture is of Superwinch-designed electric drum winches. The Ferry Overdrive is still in production in America. Topic: Aircraft. Topic: Ferry aircraft. Year of first flight in brackets. Ferry Hamble Baby 1917. 
Ferry F.2 1917 Ferry Campania 1917 Ferry 3, large biplane family, starting late 1917 Ferry Endpoint 9 1917 Ferry Pintail 1920 Ferry Flycatcher, biplane fighter, 1922 Ferry Endpoint 4 1923 Ferry Fawn 1923 Ferry Firefly I 1925 Ferry Fremantle, long-range seaplane 1925 Ferry Ferret 1925 Ferry Fox, biplane bomber, 1925 Ferry Long-range monoplane 1928 Ferry Firefly II 1929 Ferry Fleetwing 1929 Ferry Seal, biplane torpedo bomber, reconnaissance floatplane, 1930 Ferry Gordon 1931 Ferry G4 31st General Purpose 1934 Ferry FC1 Commercial Airliner Ferry S9 30th 1934 Ferry Swordfish, biplane torpedo bomber, 1934 Ferry Phantom, single-seat fighter 1935 Ferry Hendon, monoplane night bomber 1935 Ferry Battle, light bomber, 1936 Ferry Seafox, reconnaissance floatplane, 1936 Ferry P-434, 1937 Ferry Fulmar, carrier-borne fighter, 1940 Ferry Albacore, carrier-borne biplane torpedo bomber, 1938 Ferry Barracuda, carrier-borne dive bomber, torpedo bomber, 1940 Ferry Firefly, carrier-borne fighter, 1941 Ferry Spearfish, dive bomber, 1945 Ferry FB-1 Gyrodyne, Gyrodyne Autogyro, compound helicopter, 1947 Ferry Jet Gyrodyne, Gyrodyne 1954 Ferry Primer, trainer 1948 Ferry Gannett, carrier-borne ASW later AEW aircraft, 1949 Ferry Gannett AEW.3 carrier-borne AEW aircraft Ferry FD-1 Experimental Delta Wing 1950 Ferry FD. 2 Record Setting Delta Wing, 1954 Ferry Ultra Light Helicopter, 1955 Ferry Rotodyne, Autogyro, Compound Helicopter 1957 Topic. Avions Ferry Aircraft Avions Ferry Belfair Avions Ferry Junior Tipsy B Tipsy S 2 Tipsy Nipper Topic. Subcontract production As well as producing their own designs, Ferry produced other aircraft under subcontract. Short Admiralty Type 827 12 Sopwith 1 and a half Strutter 100 During the Second World War, Ferry produced nearly 500 Bristol Bowfighters and nearly 600 Handley Page Halifax 326 BMK3 and 246 BMKV. Post-war they held subcontracts for production of the de Havilland Vampire, and its successor the de Havilland Venom. Topic. Aircraft engines Ferry imported 50 Curtis-built D-12 engines in 1926, renaming them the Ferry Felix. Ferry Felix Ferry Prince V-12 Ferry Prince H-16 Prince 16-cylinder 1,500 horsepower 1,100 kilowatts Ferry Monarch 2x12 cylinders two engines with one prop shaft passing through the other 2,250 horsepower. The P-24 flew in 1939 but was cancelled during the war. Topic. Missiles and drones Ferry's interest in missile production had been kept separate from the Ferry Aviation Co. Ltd. and its subsequent absorption into the Westland Group in 1960. Production was therefore invested in Ferry Engineering Ltd. but by 1962 this had been transformed into a 50-50 joint venture with the British Aircraft Corporation Holdings Limited known as BAC at Limited, with offices at 100 Pall Mall, London SW1 and a share capital of £100. This was separate to the BAC Guided Weapons Division. The Ferry Company was also involved in the early development of pilotless aircraft which led to the development of radio-controlled pilotless target aircraft in Britain and the United States in the 1930s. In 1931, the Ferry Queen radio-controlled target was developed, building a batch of three. 
The Queen was a modified Fairy IIIF floatplane, a catapult-launched aircraft which was used for reconnaissance by the Royal Navy. Apart from installing radio gear, the Queen also had some aerodynamic modifications to improve stability. However, the first couple of pilotless flights came to quick endings as the drones crashed as soon as they left the catapult launcher on HMS Valiant. In 1960, Ferry announced an agreement between Ferry Engineering Limited and the Del Mar Engineering Laboratories, Los Angeles, California, to distribute a range of subsonic and supersonic towed target systems for air-to-air -air and surface-to-air guided weapon training in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, the Commonwealth and the UK. The parent Ferry Company and its Australian subsidiary were heavily involved guided weapon development. The weapon division of Ferry Engineering Limited was responsible in the UK for the Jindavik Mk2B pilotless target aircraft. This had a Bristol Siddeley Viper ASV.8 turbojet, giving a speed of 600 miles per hour, 970 kilometers per hour, and an operational ceiling in excess of 50,000 feet. The Ferry VTO was a vertical takeoff delta wing aircraft was designed to explore the possibility of making an aircraft launched from short ramps with low acceleration. Shown for the first time at the Society of British Aircraft Constructors show in 1952, the Ferry VTO project was used to test the basic configuration of future research craft. Each wing had a large aileron and the vertical fin carried a large rudder. The VTO obtained 900 lbf kilonewtons thrust from each beta nozzle and, for launching, used two solid fuel boosters of 600 lbf kilonewtons each, bringing the total thrust up to 3,000 lbf kilonewtons obviously more than the total weight. The Beta the first rocket had two jets, one of which could be swiveled laterally and the other vertically, according to signals from an autopilot. The resulting mean thrust line could thus be varied to maintain controlled flight at low airspeeds. Ferry carried out many successful tests, the first of which was from a ship in Cardigan Bay in 1949. Ferry Rocket Test Vehicle 1, formerly known as LOPGAP, Liquid Oxygen and Petrol Guided Anti-Aircraft Projectile. The original design can be traced back to the 1944 Royal Navy specification for a guided anti-aircraft missile known as LOPGAP. In 1947, the Royal Aircraft Establishment took over development work and the missile was renamed RTV-1. Several versions of the basic RTV-1 were developed. The Ferry Aviation Company of Australasia Pty Ltd was awarded a contract to build 40 RTV-1E rockets. The first of which were completed in early 1954. Components were built by the Royal Australian Navy Torpedo Establishment Hydraulic Servo Units, EMI Guidance Receivers and Amplifiers and the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation Magnesium Castings. Some parts were also imported from the UK. Assembly was undertaken at Salisbury, South Australia by the Special Projects Division of Ferry. Test firings took place in 1955-56 but by this time the RTV-1 was considered obsolete RTV-1E was the beam guidance test vehicle. Radar guidance was provided by a radar unit which projected a narrow beam. Different versions of the test vehicle were created and each was concerned with a different aspect of control, guidance, propulsion and aerodynamics of the complete rocket. The RTV-1E was a two-stage liquid fuel rocket used for research and development into problems associated with beam riding missiles. It was fired at an angle of 35 degrees with a maximum altitude of about 12,000 feet. The vehicle was launched by seven solid booster rockets which had a burn time of four seconds, after which the liquid fuel sustainer motor took over. At the 1954 Fambra Air Show, Ferry Australia displayed a massive missile resembling the RTV-1. The base was formed by a booster unit about six feet high and 20 inches in diameter, stabilized by four large and four small fins and housing seven five-inch motors. The main body was about 17 feet in length with a diameter of 10 in. The body was fitted with four wings and four small control vanes. Ferry Australia also displayed an aerodynamic test vehicle, described as a three-inch winged round. This was a simple projectile, without guidance, to aid investigations into the properties of various wing body assemblies at high supersonic speeds. The example shown was about six feet long, and had a finely finished, white-painted body apparently made of seamless tube. About two-thirds of the way back from the nose was fitted a laminated wood wing of about two feet span, positioned across a diameter of the body, with a root cord of some 18 inches and a quarter cord sweep of about 50 degrees. In April, 1947 Ferry released details of its first guided missile it was an anti-aircraft weapon designed for use in the Pacific War but not completed in time for use by the British Army who originally ordered it, or for the Royal Navy. The Ministry of Supply requested that the work be completed, and the stooge was the outcome. It had a length of 7 feet 5.5 in 2.273 meters, a span of 6 feet 10 in 2.08 meters, a body diameter of 17 in, and weighing 738 pounds 335 kilograms, with a warhead. 
Propulsion was by 475 lbf 330N thrust solid fuel main rockets, but initially four additional booster rockets delivering further 5,600 pounds thrust accelerated the Stooge off its 10 feet meters long launching ramp. Unlike later designs, the Stooge was intended for high subsonic speeds and limited ranges. The Stooge consisted of two stage propulsion, an autopilot, radio control equipment with additional ground unit, and a warhead. The Stooge required a launching ramp and transport. The missile was extensively tested at Woomereth. Mulcara missile was designed in Australia by British and Australian companies. It was a heavy wire guided missile for deployment from vehicles, light naval craft, and fixed emplacements. This weapon replaced the Fairy Orange William project for the MOS, which would later lead to Swingfire. Ferry Engineering had the sales agency for all countries outside the US, and was also appointed by the Australian Department of Supplies to assist in the introduction of the Mulcara to operational service and to design and produce modifications. The missile was in service with the Royal Armoured Corps, deployed on a special vehicle—the Humber Hornet, made by Wharton Engineering—which carried two rounds on launches and two rounds stowed. The Hornet could be air-dropped, had a crew of three. For training purposes the Mulcara MKI was used, with a range of some 2,000 metres 6, feet. The operational weapon was the Mulcara MK1A, which had a different type of tracking flare, thinner guidance wire, and other improvements to give approximately double the range of MK1. The Fairy Fireflash was an early air-to-air -air weapon guided by radar beam riding. Developed as Blue Sky, a derated version of the Red Hawk missile. It was in service briefly before being replaced by the de Havilland Firestreak. Green Cheese was a tactical nuclear anti-ship missile for use with the Gannet. Problems with Gannet led to continued development with the Blackburn Buccaneer but it was cancelled. <laughs> Fairy Marine Fairy Marine Limited was begun in the late 1940s by Sir Richard Fairy and Fairy Aviation's Managing Director, Mr. Chichester Smith. Both were avid sailing enthusiasts. Utilizing techniques developed in the aircraft industry during World War II both men decided that they should produce sailing dinghies and so recruited Charles Curry to help run the company when he came out of the Navy. In the following years, thousands of dinghies were produced by Fairy Marine including the Firefly, Albacore, Falcon, Swordfish, Jollyboat, Flying 15, 505 and International 14s along with the much smaller Dinky and Duckling. Later on in the 1950s they produced the larger sailing cruisers, the Atalanta named after Sir Richard's first son's wife, Titania, Fulmar and the 27-foot fisherman motor sailor based on the ferry lifeboat hull along with the 15 Cinderella outboard runabout and the 16 feet 6 inches fawn outboard powered family cruiser. <laughs> ferry band In 1937, workers at the Ferry Aviation Plant formed a brass band. For some 60 years the band was associated with the company and its successors, although the Ferry Band has now had to turn to external sources for financial backing. Throughout its history though the band has retained its identity with the company under guises as the Ferry Aviation Works Band, Williams Ferry Band and later Ferry FP Music Band. The band has recently returned to roots, rebranding as just the Ferry Band. The Fairy Band has won many national and international titles throughout its proud history. Topic: See also. Aerospace industry in the United Kingdom. Equals equals notes. <laughs>